struggling to meet tough deadlines, making town changing decisions, and being flagged by a red alert alarm? Today I played one of the most challenging city building games ever. I played 100 Days of Cardboard Town. I, Mayor Vortide, established the great town of Vortia on one sunny day. It all began with the town hall. This building was essential for planning out all of the logistics of our town. It also made us feel official, but we'll keep that a secret. Being a mayor isn't easy. There's a lot more to it than just eating cookies and drinking coffee. Those are some of the perks, however. One of the first out of many decisions I was going to have to make was where I wanted to place down a road. I guess there weren't really any wrong decisions, but I was planning out where I wanted each area to be. This was definitely going to be the residential area because that was the first few things that we could build. Houses and roads. The city of Vortia only had two coins in its budget for the first day. So, I ended up spending them on building a house. This wasn't a big issue though, because on the next day, I had gotten two more coins, which I had also spent on another house. As mayor, I was able to decide on what buildings I wanted to potentially construct in the future. A condo really caught my eye, so I grabbed onto it to save for later. The only issue with the condo building type is that it used one of the environmental resources that we had. There were a total of four different resources, water, electricity, safety, and environment. Talking about resources, one upgrade I made to the town was called Effective Factories. This gave us the opportunity to get an extra electricity resource at the end of every single day. Now that's not something to complain about. It also appeared that there were a lot of trade-offs that I could make. One of the ones that I had just grabbed was that I had to discard one of the cards in my inventory and I would get some road cards in return. Increasing the effectiveness of our roads was very important. So I placed down a bus stop to make sure that we had people riding the buses and we weren't jam packed with a bunch of cars. With the very few roads that we had, traffic jams would not be ideal right now. It appeared that I had filled the trouble meter. This caused a random negative effect on our town. In this case, it was a luxury embargo, so I wasn't able to place down my most expensive building. Apparently, the bus stop was what brought the trouble meter over the edge. Now I know not to place too many of these. Since we now had a residential area to host our 25 citizens, it was time to start focusing in on increasing our resources. I did this by placing down a water tower right next to the residential area. This increased our water supply by two. We all know people need water to survive, so this town won't really be successful if I don't have an excess. My next action as mayor in our campaign for getting resources was to build a solar panel. This increased our electricity supply by one. I was also given the chance to flip a coin to see if we could get any extra electricity. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful. I got tails, so we weren't able to optimize the solar panel to output extra electricity. Well, I guess next time. Right after all of that, I headed back near the residential area. I had a 1x3 road that I was able to place down, and it seemed like the perfect fit for this area. I could now place houses on both sides of the street. I really didn't have too many building options in my hand, so I used a special card to discard all of the items that I had in my inventory. This also allowed me to draw three new construction items that could be built. This ended up being pretty worth it, as I got a new road, a park, a fire station, and then I ended up getting a house from the next day. Parks are incredibly useful and can be optimized when placing them in residential areas. They increase the amount of citizens you can have in each house nearby it. As a logical mayor, I'm sure you know exactly where I placed it. After placing down another house, I reached the population of 35 in my city. This called for an upgrade. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Even though we hadn't received any red lights yet, which are basically just flags that things are going bad in the city, I chose an upgrade to help curve any future ones. Well, I guess it was more of a benefit from getting one. But anyways, if we get a red light in the future, we get an upgrade with it. With something bad comes something good, literally. We had a pretty decent amount of water supply, and I had noticed that the trouble meter was one away from being filled. This inspired me to look into building a fire station. Fire stations make things a lot more safe, so placing it near certain buildings decreased the trouble meter by quite a lot. Each house decreased it by one, while each tile that it was in near the park decreased it by one as well. This pushed back the trouble meter by four. 
That victory was short-lived as I used a card called Population Boom. It increased the trouble meter by two, but also gave me an apartment building and residence building, hence Population Boom. It was time for our town to receive its very first quest card. These are pretty much just construction projects that you have to build within a certain amount of time, and each one has its own stipulations. One important aspect of these quest cards is if you don't fulfill the quest within a certain amount of time, you will get a red alert alarm. Oh, and by the way, if you get three red alert alarms, your town gets closed down. That would mean the end of the town of Vortia. The quest that I had taken on was to build a statue of solitude. Luckily enough, this wasn't very hard to do, so I just placed it down in a residential area and actually reduced my trouble meter by one, while also gaining some population. Right as I completed the quest card, I was able to host a festival. The one I hosted increased my electricity supply by two, and was also supposed to deliver two water supply cards to my deck. Looks like these quest things weren't so bad, as long as you got them done. I wanted to utilize the residence building from the population boom. I placed it in a spot that allowed me to get 16 residents from it, as well as reduce the trouble meter by one. Now that's what I call efficient. The residence building was half on a road, half off of it. So I placed down another 3x1, which completely destroyed a forest. Unfortunately, you lose an environmental resource when you destroy a forest. Well, well, who would have thought? I ended up filling the trouble meter once again. This time though, the town got two negative effects. The first one being that all coin flips result in tails, and the second one being that if I run out of energy, the safety of the town decreases by one. Even though these weren't good things, they really didn't affect the town in such a terrible way. They were kind of more like little annoyances. I also had a lot of reserve power, 10 to be exact, so I don't really think we're going to have to worry about running out. To show off how confident I was with our electrical supply, I ended up building a clinic which drained 3 power. In return, I got plus 1 protection and an extra policeman. I had then stumbled upon a water supply. This gave me an extra water resource for doing absolutely nothing. Little did I know, it seemed like someone wanted water to be our main focus. When I traded out some cards to get a new one, I ended up getting an industrial water well. Too bad I can't really use it now. I'll hold on to it though. One thing I did need was a store. I ended up placing it down in the best location that I possibly could. I got 7 additional citizens from it and reduced the trouble meter by 1. After getting quite a few more road cards, I planned on using them for the residential area. I honestly wasn't sure if it was a good idea to use the 2x1 to connect the two currently available residential roads, but I did it anyways. I guess we'll find out long term how this affects us. I then used the other 1x1 and 1x3 to build yet a third road in the residential area. As the day progressed, I got to choose a new festival. I ended up picking the shopping festival. This increased the amount of revenue that our town was bringing in as it brought in a lot more shoppers. So we got an extra gold coin every single day for the next seven days. Things were also going splendidly. We had just reached over 75 citizens, so I was able to pick yet another upgrade for the town. The upgrade I picked was dynamite. It would destroy all trailer parks in the town. It was kind of funny though, because I don't know if this was really much of an upgrade since I didn't have any trailer parks in the town. Oh no, it was time for yet another quest card. This quest consisted of a revenue service office, which costed two policemen to build. It also made me lose two power supply. Well, at least when I'm going to build it. And that time is now. I ended up placing the revenue service office on the complete other side of the town from the residential area. This honestly wasn't the best move as I was trolling my citizens as they had to go there to make their payments. At the same time though, when I think about it, I'm actually kind of helping the citizens deal with their stress. Nobody wants to come home after a long day at work and see the building that they have to pay taxes at right next to their house. Since I had labeled this area of the map as the not fun area, I ended up placing down a coal power plant right beside the revenue service office. The resource that I had the least amount of was the environmental resource. Luckily enough, I had the tools that I needed to increase it. Those tools were trees. I just needed to place down a forest to get a plus two towards my environmental resource. It had also seemed like I could increase the amount of citizens living in my city by placing this small forest right next to the residential area. I was doing my usual mayor things right when an earthquake had erupted in our town. It looked like a whole bunch of buildings were destroyed because of this earthquake, and it was still going on. 
I started to go into panic mode. I honestly wasn't sure what to do, so I placed down a fire station as quickly as I possibly could. Even though the fire stations used up quite a lot of water, my whole thought process was that if I had some more policemen and more protection in the city while all of this was going on, I would be able to deal with it a lot better. I was 100% right. It seemed like I was able to stop the earthquake actually by sending one of my police officers in. I don't know how that works, but I'm not going to question it. This natural disaster was quite devastating. Three of the buildings in the city had got completely destroyed. And that was only the first day of the earthquake. Imagine if we had to deal with it for a couple. It seemed like someone was working against us. First we had this natural disaster happen, and now we have to pick a quest card. The only thing is, all of these quest cards are pretty terrible. I'm going to be losing resources no matter the quest that I take. After taking a while to think about which one would be the best for the city, I ended up choosing a sketchy pawn shop. Now that sounds kind of contradictory, but my whole thought process was, I would be able to build this pawn shop and I could spend 3 security and 3 electricity, two of the resources that I had the most of. In theory, this would affect my city the least amount. The parking garage was my second option that I was really considering, it's just I didn't want to have to spend all of the space that was required to build one of them and have it be surrounded by roads that I didn't have. Welp, it's time to finally place this building. Let's hope it doesn't make things too bad around here. I had gotten extremely lucky. I was able to choose my next card, and one of them ended up being a police operation. This destroyed organized crime in the city, or it gave us an extra security resource. So I obviously used it right away, and with there being no organized crime in the city, I was able to get one security resource back. Now that's what I call convenient timing. We were still recovering from the earthquake. I was placing down as many buildings as I possibly could to rebuild the population and town. The first thing I built was a house, then a residence, and then even a bus stop. Sure enough, right as I put the bus stop down, we had received a heat wave. It appeared that if the town's water resource was negative, it could potentially decrease our water and environmental resource at the end of the day. Now even though this wasn't really a pressing matter, I did end up spending one of each resource to stop the negative effect. Now you might be wondering why. Well it wasn't really that expensive and I also had the peace of mind in case my water supply started to go down and things got bad. Oh my gosh, we're really not going to have to worry about that now since I just got another water tower. You really only can plan for so much. Another quest already? I ended up having to pick another quest card. I felt like I had just done this. Regardless, I ended up looking at my options, and it seemed like the recycling center seemed to be one of the best. I only had to spend 4 electricity and 2 environmental in order to place it. Now that's a lot better than having to spend 7 electricity on some of the other options. After placing the building, I was now able to choose a festival. I was super conflicted because one of them was going to give me 2 security and 1 environmental resource, or I could draw an extra card each day. I decided to take a gamble and go with the one that grants me an extra card each day. I was really hoping that I could get some buildings to produce more of the resources that I needed. It looks like we're just going to have to wait and find out if this gamble pays off. Well, well, what do you know? I got a solar panel the very next time a card was drawn. Even though it only provides one additional energy, it's a start. Despite my hopes, I wasn't as lucky though on the next day. I didn't get anything good in my deck besides a card that allowed me to completely wipe my deck. So I did that and drew a whole bunch of new cards. And that's how we do it. I ended up getting a wind turbine which provided an additional 3 electricity. I had also gotten a fountain which consumed 3 water but gave me 2 environmental resources. I quickly had placed down the fountain as I had an abundance of the water resource, 10 to be exact. I had then looked into placing a clinic, which increased my security and added another police officer to the force. I was really trying to focus on increasing my city's daily income. The turbine that we had received blueprints for required 6 coins to build. I unfortunately had a limit of 5 coins per day, so we couldn't even build the wind turbine if we wanted. That was when an upgrade had caught my eye. I was able to increase my daily income by 2, but I would only be able to place down 3 structures every single day. Without really thinking much, I had chosen this as my upgrade for the city. I was now sitting at 8 coins per day. I really started to think though as I was continuing the construction of the residential area of my city. Well, I'm definitely going to end up needing to build more than 3 buildings per day when we get into the future. So this might have been a good idea for now. 
But as the city gets bigger, I'm really going to have to prioritize the buildings that I need to construct. Hey, at least I get to place my wind turbine now. It was already time for another quest card. One that had caught my eye was a mineral mine. It ended up costing quite a bit of security and a little bit of electricity and environmental. The one perk that I got out of it was 6 coins on the same exact day that we were on. I now had 10 coins for the day. That was the most I've ever had. This was pretty cool because I was able to use them to invest in a skyscraper. This thing was massive. It was the tallest building in my whole entire city. It also provided me with 24 additional citizens, and minus 2 on the trouble meter. I think it's safe to say, that was a good investment. I was pretty surprised about how big my residential area was becoming. It was taking up almost half of the land that we owned. I guess that explains why we have a lot of citizens, but not too many daily coins. You would think that I would focus on making the industrial area even bigger. Well, I'm not. I don't really have any buildings that I could place there. This resulted in me continuing to build up the residential area. Real quick, if you enjoy my videos, go ahead and check out my merch store. For the first time ever, I had more coins than I had buildings I could place. So I had to hit the mayor button, which used up a certain amount of coins in order for me to draw another structure. No, another earthquake. The city was hit with another natural disaster. This time, it costed a whole lot more resources to get rid of it. The alternative was to send in three police, which would take care of the problem. So I ended up doing that, as I didn't want to burn through all of my resources. Well, now we have zero police in this city, hopefully nothing goes wrong. And I just had to say something. It was time for yet another quest. Luckily enough, I didn't have to spend any police officers to complete any of the quests. I ended up selecting constructing a fishing port. The requirements for this construction weren't that bad. The building just needed to be placed on a body of water, and it was going to use up two of my water supply and two of my electricity supply. I had then focused on building this police station that had appeared in my inventory. I knew that I needed to have at least one officer in the city at all times. Having zero was incredibly risky, so I made it my priority to get that thing down as soon as possible. Looks like the situation is back under control. Oh wait, we don't have any electricity. It's not the end of the world because I'm not at negative electricity. If I was, then we would get a red alert alarm. But in this scenario, I'm not, and I could still raise my electricity level before it becomes negative. So as long as I make it a priority to get more electricity and not end up spending anymore, I think we'll be set. It was now time to get an upgrade for this city. One that had specifically caught my eye was that every time I level up, I gain one of each resource. Since I had enough coins now, it was time to solve my electricity problem. I ended up placing down a wind turbine, which gained me 3 electricity. I also had the potential to build a solar panel when I had enough coins. In less than a couple days, we were able to go from having 0 electricity to having 4. That's quite the comeback. It's time for a quest card. It seemed like the quests really weren't that bad. At first they were a little bit intimidating, but once I started to get my bearings of how city management works, these really weren't the end of the world. My new objective was to build an elementary school. This would be the very first school in our city, which would be awesome. We don't really have any form of education currently, so we at least needed to get something going. Rest in peace to my power supply again. Right as I had constructed the elementary school, we unlocked the resource of education. It appears that for every 10 citizens that join my city, I lose one education. Also, if our education falls below zero, the city gets a red alert alarm. If managing four resources wasn't enough, now we have five. I had completely forgot that building the elementary school was a quest card, so I got to pick a festival after it was completed. This festival increases the population of my city by two at the end of every single day for seven days. It's called the Hippie Festival. After what felt like an eternity, we had finally gotten another industrial building. I placed it down as soon as I possibly could, as I wanted to increase my electricity output. Quest card time. As I looked over my potential options of what I needed to build for these quests, I completely avoided one that introduced a new resource. I don't really know what that resource was, but I was already managing 5, and I didn't want to take on a 6 one so soon. The quest that I did take on though, was just to build a post office. 
This wasn't that hard as it only consumed two electricity from my supply. My card deck was getting pretty full. I didn't really have any space to take on more cards. That's cause we had so many. One card that I had found especially useful was the change of plans. It completely wiped out all of the cards in my deck except the quest card and then gave me a whole bunch of new ones. Weirdly enough, after getting all new cards, I didn't get any that were super useful. So I used the mayor button to get even more. It's kind of ironic. I had just wiped out my deck because I had way too many cards that weren't any good, and now I'm back to drawing cards as I needed more. The ending time for the post office quest was approaching. I only had three more days to get it built. So I figured now was as good a time as any to get it done. I had placed it down and then I was given the choice of choosing a new card. I needed a whole bunch more roads. So I ended up picking Pave the Way, which allows me to get a whole bunch of road cards while I trade them out for one card in my deck. I ended up not trading a card out right away. I wanted to place down a small forest and then I decided to do it. I chose an industrial water well to trade out for my three road cards. My whole thought process behind this was that I already had eight water and it was my most common resource. So it wouldn't make a big difference if I traded this card out. My next quest entailed a parking garage. It appeared that the parking garage had to be surrounded by streets on every side of it. So it was time to put my new road cards to work. I placed them down, leaving a two x two, which was just the perfect amount of space for the parking garage. I was then faced with having to pick one of three cards. Two of the options, hospital and university, were gonna use up at least four of one of my resources. I really didn't wanna deal with that right now, so I ended up just grabbing a research card, which consumes one police. Even though I really only had one, I thought that it would be a lot easier to manage than having zero electricity or zero security. I came to this conclusion because I haven't had to use a police in at least the last 20 days. I also had a clinic which increases my police count by one. So in the theory that I do wanna use this research card, I could get another police in at least a day. This was all theoretical though. I didn't even need to use the research card if I didn't want to. It's not like it was a quest card. Surprisingly enough, I wasn't flying through the education resource. I really thought I was going to, but I wasn't. Regardless of how fast I was using the education or not, I placed down a library. The next set of quest cards was brutal. I had realized that I could only choose one. The other two would make me lose all of my energy. So I ended up going with the slums quest card. This was the only one that wasn't gonna give me a red alert alarm. The only issue is it was gonna drain a whole bunch of my other resources. Not to zero, but close. The slums also took up a huge amount of space. But thankfully enough, I got a festival after placing them. I ended up rolling with the hippie festival again. We had hosted one of these earlier on in the city's history. So I would be able to get an additional two citizens every single day. This was definitely worth it. I made a complete blunder. I wasn't thinking for some reason and I ended up placing down a clinic. My whole thing was I was gonna get more security out of it and I was gonna get at least another police officer, but I forgot that I had completely run out of power. So I reached negative power and got my very first red alert alarm. There was only one thing that I could do to possibly get through this, and that was to use my research card. It granted me two random resources, and sure enough, the two random resources that it gave me were electricity. I was probably the most luckiest mayor that ever existed. I completely threw a Hail Mary, hoping for the best, and it somehow worked out. This was a clear sign that the city of Vortia was meant to be. Nothing was gonna stop us. On top of all the awesome things that were happening, I got to choose an upgrade. This upgrade was called Busy Mayor, and it decreased the amount of my mayor button by one coin. With all of the excitement going on, I placed a store right on top of a small forest. This was an ideal. I lost one environmental resource because of this. I don't know why I did that. I honestly just needed to slow down and make sure that what I was doing was what I actually wanted to do. After that whole situation, I started to look for an area to place down some of my condos. Each one of these buildings makes me lose one environmental resource. This isn't ideal as I had just wasted one, but I wanted to make sure that my population was growing quickly. Right after I brought my environmental resource down to zero, I planned on building a library which should bring it back up to one. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get to do this right away. I didn't have enough coins to just place it down. So I moved on to the next day, which brought me into my next quest. As usual, there was only one card that I could really pick, and this was going to bring me under on electricity. So I had to find out a way to get exactly one more electricity to make this quest work. I was thinking and thinking of what I could possibly do. I really didn't have any obvious solutions that jumped out at me, so I was just kind of looking around for places that I could put down potential buildings. This really wasn't the best idea that I could do, but even if I tried drawing new cards from the mayor button, they would just immediately get put into the trash can. So I needed to place down some sort of building in order to see new cards. The city's water supply was pretty full, so I ended up using a card that got rid of two water. This way, I had a chance at getting an electricity card. And Eureka! I got one! Thankfully enough, I was able to get a wind turbine. This increased my electricity by three. Honestly, that was the perfect amount. I could now place down the movie theater and have some electricity left over. Thankfully, I placed the wind turbine at the perfect time because I had filled the trouble meter and it discarded my hand. So that means if I would have held on to the wind turbine for one more day, I would have lost it. This new hand was pretty clutch though. I got a new card that I had never seen. It would allow me to get a new upgrade at the end of the day if I flipped heads. Of course, I flipped tails. So the card itself was destroyed, and I didn't get the benefits of it. I guess I really can't complain though. I was still able to choose an upgrade as I had just unlocked one. And that upgrade was Land of Peace. This upgrade will give me protection every single time that I have a festival. So in other words, every time that I complete a quest. Speaking of those pesky quests, it was time that I took on another one. The only thing is, I still had my current quest active. This now meant that I was going to have to juggle both quests and get them done before the timers ran out. The one I chose required me to build a furniture factory. This was going to introduce us to a new resource type. It also seemed like I didn't have enough power to complete both of the quest cards. I started searching for a way to try and get more electricity. I did have quite a bit of time to get this done, but the sooner I figured it out, the sooner I wouldn't have to worry about getting some red alert alarms. After going through a plethora of ideas, I figured it would make the most sense to just build the movie theater now. I had enough power to do so, and I had enough power to do so earlier. I probably shouldn't have waited so long, but I did, and now's the time to deal with it. So I placed down the movie theater. We were now super low on power. We had two to be exact. It also looked like the red alert alarm went on, and I don't know why. This makes absolutely zero sense, I didn't do anything wrong. That was until I noticed our education was at minus one. Thank god I had a preschool construction blueprint just sitting around. This solved our education problem, at least temporarily. These were trying times for our city. We were already required to do another quest. It really felt like these objectives were getting harder and harder and costing even more resources every time. I ended up choosing the mission of building a junkyard. This was going to completely deplete our environmental resources, but it honestly was the best move. Even though I was already doing the furniture factory quest for a while now, I was able to complete the junkyard quest first. I honestly didn't even think that I was going to be able to finish building the furniture factory before the time was up. Since I was already leaning towards that path, I figured that it would make the most sense to act as if I didn't even have to do the furniture factory and continue to manage the city as normal. One slight oversight that I had was that we were completely running out of education. I once again forgot about this, and I wasn't paying attention to our education resources. Things were not looking good for us. We were about to have two red light alarms. I started to panic and tried to solve the situation quickly. And that was a mistake because I placed down a coal plant. These plants produce a lot of electricity, but they cost two environmental. I didn't even realize I only had one environmental resource left. That meant that I was now at negative one and I had received my second red alert alarm. To make things even worse, the trouble meter was completely filled. I ended up getting the negative effect of thunder craze. Every time I built a building that costed six coins or more, I lost one electricity. I knew that I needed to focus in on one of the red alert alarms. I ended up building a high school which allowed me to have enough education to not have a red alert alarm. The city was back in a slightly more calm state. The only issue was I still had that quest card that I needed to finish. 
otherwise I was going to be having a second red alert alarm again. I lost all hope at this point. I was tasked with building a recycling center in 8 days, so I strategically placed down a small forest, getting me out of the negative for the environmental resource, and then built the recycling center, which brought me back into the negative. The nice thing though was I got to choose a festival. I was really hoping that one of them would help me out with the environmental resources, but none of them did. I only had 2 days left to build the furniture factory. I still wasn't on track to do that though. Sure enough, the deadline for that quest arrived. I wasn't able to get it done. So, one of the red alert alarms was completely locked off. Thankfully enough, this didn't mean that it was the end of our town though. It was only one alarm that was completely locked. I know that I'll be able to learn from this mistake and make this city a better place because of it.